Thank you, thank you, Lord. From your heart. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord, for everything. We return the glory to you. Thank you, thank you. Glory be to God. We say thank you, Lord, for everything. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord, for everything. We are grateful. Oh Lord, we are grateful, Jesus. We are grateful. Oh Lord, for all you've done for us. For all you, for all you've done for us. We are grateful. Two more times. We are grateful, Jesus. We are grateful. Oh, Lord. We are grateful, Jesus. We are grateful. Oh, Lord. For all you've done for us. For all you have, you have done. Hallelujah, we are grateful for all you've done for us, for all you have done for us, oh Lord. We are grateful, oh Lord. You're going to pray from your heart to this year. I will not die but live. In the name of Jesus, pray that prayer from your heart. Pray with intensity. This year, I will not die but live. In the name of Jesus, every power, every kind of spirit, every hand joining hand for me to go down the drain. In the name of Jesus, it will not happen. In the name of Jesus, I speak to my body, I speak to my health, I speak to my brain, I speak to my blood vessel, in the name of Jesus, begin to do the word of the Lord. I will not die but live. Come on, pray that prayer. I will not die but live. To declare God's word, in the name of Jesus. I can't hear you. I will not die but live. In the name of Jesus. I go conquering and to conquer. Lives don't remain the same. In the name of Jesus. Pray with zeal. Pray with, with fervency. I will not die but live. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, you're going to pray from your heart, say in the name of Jesus, every plot and plan that is not of God be extinguished right now in my life. In the name of Jesus, every plot and plan that is not of God be extinguished right now in my life. In the name of Jesus, pray that prayer. Every plot and plan of the adversary that is not of God be extinguished. In the north, in the south, in the east, in the west, be extinguished. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over you. In the name of Jesus, be extinguished. You are not my portion. I'm not your candidate. In the name of Jesus, everywhere I turn, I see victory. 
Everywhere I go, I see victory. Every plot and plan of the enemy be extinguished in the name of Jesus. Only the tree that my father has planted in my life is uh, uh, permitted to survive in my life. In the name of Jesus, every plot and plan of the evil one in my life be extinguished. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. I'm an attraction for strange direction. I'm inspired from Zion. Pray that prayer. I'm an attraction in the name of Jesus for strange direction. I'm inspired from Zion in the name of Jesus. Oh, my spirit is sensitive. The voice of the stranger will never follow. In the name of Jesus, mistakes are obliterated in my life. Results are maximized. In the name of Jesus, the voice of the stranger will not follow. I'm inspired from Zion. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Pray in tongues. Spend some time. Say my spirit is sensitive. I'm an attraction for strange direction. I'm inspired from on high. In the name of Jesus. I will never know it better yesterday. God begin to align my life according to his will. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Say, so I will not be ordinary. In the name of Jesus. I will not be ordinary. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus. Precious name we prayed. You are going to declare, you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, my times are in your hands. Perfect all that concerns me. Pray that prayer. My times are in your hand. Oh Lord, perfect all that concerns me. I will not lag behind. I will not be ahead of my time. I will be right on time. Declare, I will be at the right place at the right time. Doing the right things. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, perfect all that concerns me. In the name of Jesus, I will not be in a rat race. I will not run because of people. I will not be into competition. My times are in your hands. Perfect all that concerns me. I declare that I'm a tree planted by the rivers of water. I bear my fruit in my season. Lord, I decree and I declare that in the name of Jesus, this season will not pass without me bearing my fruits. In the name of Jesus, I bear my fruit in my season. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Perfect all that concerns me. Perfect my relationship. Perfect my health. Perfect my finance. That business, perfected. That contract, perfected. That proposal perfected in the name of Jesus. May I not lag behind in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Decree and declare, say, in the name of Jesus, I speak and I declare continuous progress in the name of Jesus. Continuous progress in my life in the name of Jesus. My feet are facing forward because I'm going to be moving in the right direction. Continuous progress. Pray that prayer. In the name of Jesus, continuous progress. Come on. Everywhere I go in my career, in my spiritual life, stagnation is on my portion. In the name of Jesus, stagnation is not my portion. Oh, kasatara baba. Stagnation has no place in my life. In the name of Jesus.
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Father, we thank you. Because you're a prayer answering God. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. In Jesus' precious name. This morning, give us direction. Inspire us. Speak to our hearts. Knock on the door of our hearts. Let us know what to do. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a mighty, mighty, mighty hand. Be seated. God bless you. Love you right back. God bless you. Obedience is something that you need to pay attention to. Human beings, because we have brains, we want to do things that we want. An average human being is prejudiced. The way you grew up, the things you were exposed to, the things you've embraced, the things you are used to. Now that you're born again, you need to learn how God operates. The kingdom of God explains the way God operates, the way God does what he does. We get results when we understand how God does what he does. Jesus said, I do what I see my father do. He didn't have results because he was anointed, because he just wanted to do what he wanted. You know the kind of prayer he prayed at the Garden of Gethsemane? He wanted to do what the father wanted. He said, Father, my soul is troubled, but let, let it be your will and not mine. When you get to that level, you begin to operate and begin to experience open doors. Because we are human, many times you don't even get it right. But the Bible was written so that you can understand exactly what God wants. I pray in the name of Jesus, the devil will not take advantage of us. In the name of Jesus. It was by faith. Hebrews 11, even Hebrews 11, 4. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. It wasn't what he brought. It was by faith. Now, let me quickly preempt myself. Faith is not faith, except it has, it has an ingredient called obedience in it. Faith is not being optimistic. Faith is not only taking risk. Faith is not being positive. So if you allow me to say this by obedience, <laughs> Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice. What a statement. What a statement. Somebody sacrificed his time, his brain, his gift, his effort, his money to God. And God did not accept it. It was a sacrifice. But it wasn't excellent. What gives you an edge over the devil is your obedience. What gives you an edge in that relationship, in that career, anything and everything you do, what gives you an edge is your obedience. It's not your coming to church. It's not your listening to a message. It's not your preaching, in case you're a preacher, or I'm talking to myself. What gives you an edge over the devil is your obedience to what Christ has done. Hebrews 5 verse 9. Hebrews 5 verse 9. Having been perfected. Having been perfected. He became an author of eternal salvation to all who just come to church. Amen? Amen. To all who do what? Who obey him. Who obey him. Your obedience gives you an edge. In fact, your obedience guarantees answer to prayers. That's why the Bible says to obey is better than sacrifice. Sacrifice is good. It's important. There's no way you can be in the right relationship with Jesus Christ without sacrificing. It may not require you to go to the cross again because he has gone to the cross once and for all. But there will be a sacrifice. The Bible says whoever wants to gain his life will lose it. Whoever wants to lose his life will actually gain it. That's sacrifice. Carry your cross daily and follow me. That's sacrifice. Paul says I die daily. That's sacrifice. 
Present your body, I beseech you, brethren, by the message of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. That's sacrifice daily. But if your sacrifice, it's outside obedience, no matter what it is, it's not acceptable. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, if you read from verse 1, 1 Corinthians 13, though I speak in tongues of men, so they are tongues of men, and of angels, so they are tongues of angels, and have not love. Now, faith works by love. And love is obedience. He said, if you love me, do what I say. Okay? If you love me, do what I say. Not what you feel. Not what is trending. Do what I say. If you love me. He says, why do you call me Lord, Lord? And do not do what I say. Not what you feel in a circumstance. No relativism. Oh, it depends what God says. This guarantees, this makes your faith work. This guarantees your result. This guarantees open door in your life. Although I speak with tongues of men and not of angels, but I have not obedience, if you allow me. I have become a sounding brass and a clanging cymbal. Activity without accomplishment. Verse 2. Although I have the gift of prophecy, have been in the body of Christ, I've been born again for a long time, and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge, though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains but I don't have obedience, I am nothing. I'm nothing. Verse 3 will make you think Although I bestow all my goods to the poor, to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned, who does that? And I say, no, 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 I'm a, I'm a child of God, burn my body. But I have no obedience. How can you burn your body and you don't have love? How? How? Can you say, no, burn me, I'm a Christian, and you don't love God, which means it's possible. For you to be indulging activity. Want people to love you. Want people to like you. There are many reasons why people uh, do well in church. And you don't love God. Bible says you are, it profits you nothing. You know, even with this scripture, if you leave this place thinking, wow, I must have love. And the best way to understand this love it's not just loving people, it's part of it. Agapeo is loving God. If you love me, do what I say. So at the end of the day, is obedience we're talking about. Obedience. Why do people know your stuff and God doesn't know anything? Why? Why? People know your business. When you fight your wife, you're on the internet. <laughs> you want to let people know what you're going through. But God doesn't have any part in, in, in your business. He's not the Lord of your life. Lord is the word curious, the person that tells you what to do. The person that tells you what to do. Think about it this morning. There are things, you know, you love God, that's why you're here. You love church, that's why you're here. You love some things that God does, that's why you're here. But is it the Lord of your life? Does it tell you what to do? Is it the one that determines the things you do in your life, in your marriage? Can you look around and say, I'm doing God's will. Before you say the devil has taken over, the devil is walking. Are you doing what God says? Or you're doing what you want? Activity is, is not an amount to accomplishment in the kingdom of God. If I give my, my, my body to be burned and I don't have love, it profits me nothing. God does not mark you. God says, well, you just killed yourself. Think about it, your sacrifices. And inside what you do, you're not doing what God says to do. And I'm not talking about something that is too much. Sometimes they're not sins. They are weights. God says, you talk too much. You talk too much. 
you agree and say, yes, I talk too much. But you go back and go back to reset. And you cancel everything you've done because God has told you, if you put this in place, I will receive you. Now, God has accepted us in the beloved already. But many are called, few are chosen. When you do these things, you make yourself a vessel unto honor, ready to be used by the master. Some people are not usable. God cannot advance what he has given to you because you are not listening to him. And if you want to be lost, you will not hear your master's whistle. So the difference between Christianity and religion is when you think, no, I've come to DPE to pray. I wake up early, I turn on my internet, and I, I, I join this prayer group. And you go back to reset. No, that's not Christianity. That's not grace. The grace of God, Titus 2.11, that has brought salvation to us has appeared to us. In verse 12, it's appeared to all men. Verse 12, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. And we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present age. So God knows the internet will exist. God knows there will be a lot of influence. What you do is we're not perfect. We're not, we're not, we, we, we don't live a life without sin, but we move towards perfection. That's what we do. Okay? In, in Psalm 10, verse 4, why is it that people don't move towards perfection? The Bible says the wicked in his proud countenance. You see, pride is very dangerous. And pride is not only when you don't greet people. Pride is when you think, no, I'm self-sufficient. I'm this, I'm spiritual. The worst one is spiritual pride. <laughs> when you think you are something, don't think more highly than you ought to. The more you are closer to God, the closer you are to God, the more humble you are. You know, when Isaiah saw the Lord, he said the, the, year, the, the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And he described him how that his robe filled the whole th temple. And he ended up by saying, who is me? You may not say that because you're in Christ. But the more you get close to God, the closer you are to God, the more you understand that you need to work on some things. You know what light does? When light shines in darkness, the light reveals things. The, the closer you move to God, the more you realize, I need to work on this. I need to work on this. I need to work on this. You can imagine how close Paul was to God. He said that I may know you. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. This, this sinfulness of sin shall not catch up with us. In the name of Jesus. In Psalm 10 verse 4, the Bible says the wicked in his proud countenance does not see God. Does not see God. Pride makes you to be self-sufficient. God is none of his thoughts. Now, the question I want to ask you, what you are doing right now, is God in your thoughts? Before you act the way you act, is God in your thoughts? His laws, his instructions, what brought you to where you are, is in your thoughts. In Psalm 50 verse 22, Psalm 50, verse 22. Now consider this. Tap your neighbor say, you need to consider this. You who forget God. <laughs> Bible says, lest I tear you in pieces and there's none to deliver. He has become the author of salvation. Hebrews 5, 9. He's become the author of salvation to all who will be. All who will be. If you want to be salvaged, if you want things that, that swallow people in your family to be different for you, if you want to have a different experience, you have to walk in obedience. In Isaiah 1, Isaiah 1 verse 19, Isaiah 1, it said, if you're willing and obedient, I wish you could read from 15. It said, if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. 
You will eat the good of the land if you obey what God says. In prayer, in your consecration, in your finance, in your relationship. The reason why people don't enjoy what God has pre-programmed for them is because they don't walk in love with God's word. As it is written, I have not seen here nor heard. Neither has entered into the heart of men what God has made ready, prepared for those, not everybody, for those, not the ones that he loves, but those who love him. And if you love me, keep my words. Now, I know that people are willing, but we have a few people that are obedient. You want to do little, and this kalo kalo God, you want him to just perform. What makes Christianity dangerous is that whether you're in the Old Testament or New Testament, is a covenant relationship. God does his part, you do your part. Remember how you were born again. God has done his part in Christ Jesus. You apply faith, you did your part to what God did, and suddenly you are saved. What happened to people that are not saved? Christ did not die for the church, he died for the whole world. They did not do their part. The same way you enter into finance, the same way you enter into deliverance, the same way you enjoy your marriage, the same way if you think what I'm used to is what I want to do, you will have your own result. Hallelujah. In Hebrews 11 verse 8, Hebrews 11 verse 8, by faith, when Abraham, our father, by faith, Abraham, our father, obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was going. I want to ask you a question. If Abraham prayed more and fasted more and sang a new song and composed a song for God and gave all his animals to God and stayed where he was and said, God, you know what? I don't want to move. I don't want to obey you. Would he have entered into the inheritance? No. To obey is better than sacrifice. Child of God, maybe you're listening to me today on the internet or you're here physically and there's something God has put a finger on and you say, no, I will come for DPE for the next nine months. I will give half of my salary. God says, no, this is what I want. This is what I want. To obey is better than sacrifice. And why obedience is important is because it opens doors that you never thought would open to your life. In fact, for somebody, today is the first day of the rest of your life. Amen. It will be like the devil doesn't exist anymore. Amen. There's some things you'll never see around you when you decide to obey God's word. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? In Hebrews 11 verse 7, Hebrews 11 verse 7, the Bible says, by faith, Noah, being divinely warned of the things, yet not yet seen, moved. You see? The key word in that verse is move. He moved. Child of God, I want you to take that step today in God. If you, if you take that step, you'll be shocked how God will lift you up. You'll be shocked that your next level is linked to that move. The reason why Somebody is not making wave is because you're not making move in God. Not because you're not hardworking. Not because you're not doing things. Activity is not what I'm teach, teaching you. Sometimes God can even tell you, stay until I give you a go ahead. We have a church in Nigeria here. We have a, over a billion in the account. We have negotiated the land. We're waiting for the marching order. That sounds odd to some people. It doesn't sound odd to me. Why? Anything that God is not part of, <laughs> you will struggle. You'll be sweating. You'll be into activity and you'll be on the spot. And I'm not talking to lazy people, people that postpone things and say, yeah, we'll do it tomorrow. No, I'm talking about when you deliberately ask God, God should we move and he tells you wait. It's very hard when you're intelligent not to use your brain. Very hard for you to have money to move and God tells you to wait. If you can't work, 
and they tell you, stay where you are. You're not exerting any faith. You can't walk anyway. So you're, you're going to stay there. But if you can move around and you stay, you actually stayed because God told you to stay. Then it is said that you're walking by faith. Child of God, what can you not do? What are you with, uh, re restraining yourself from doing because of God? What are you restraining yourself from doing because God is in your thoughts? The Bible says he moved and prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which, by which he condemned the world. It was not God that condemned the world. That move condemned the world. Question I want to ask you, what is the move you're supposed to make that will cut you off the things that swallow people in your family? It's not enough to say, I'm going to church to pray. It's not enough to say, oh my God, I'm not told my God. It's not about God. You have a part to play. God has a part to play. Any Christianity, you see, most of the songs in Nigeria, you know, they use me play. You know, they do this. You know, I'm not saying those things are not right. God is committed to covenant. But you also must know that there's some things you need to do. If he doesn't play with you, then don't play with him. Hallelujah. Maturity is when you begin to respond to the love of God. Okay? Praise God. Praise God. I'm out of time. In Romans 6 verse 17, Romans 6 verse 17, the Bible says, but God be thanked that though we were slaves of sin, yet we obeyed from the heart. The form, that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. If you don't obey God from your heart, God does not mark it. God hears every language, yes. But the Holy Spirit gave me a simple formula. The language God hears is the one from the heart. No matter the language you speak externally, your heart is saying something. Bible says God weighs the heart. So if you don't obey God from your heart, if you do a lip service, do eye service, God does not receive it. He looks at the heart. You know, someone got to the house of Jesse and wanted to ordain Eliab. And God says, no! Don't look at the tallness of that young man. Don't look at his countenance. Man, God does not look like man looks. God looks at the heart. So if you don't obey God from your heart, if you are hound to do what you want to do, you enter a problem, then you say, God, receive me. It's good to start like that. But as time goes on, you have to learn. Don't be like the ox that needs to be beaten or the moon that needs to be beaten to obey. To experience open doors, to enjoy open doors, you have to say from today, you know what? I want to be obedient in my relationship. This is the 21st century church. Nobody will follow you to your house, your boyfriend's house. I want to be obedient. I want some things to be different concerning me. I want to be obedient. I went to a mentor's house. And driving there, I said, wow, what kind of result is this? And I said, sir, tell me. Tell me, what is the reason for all this? And he said, and what he said to me had to do with obedience. Obedience. What he said to me had to do with obedience. What is God telling you? What are you doing? In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to pull down strongholds, casting down arguments or imagination, and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Not what exists, you know, you know, the economy right now is this way, so I'm going to act this way. No. Obey the instant is season and out of season. I love verse 6, and I'm going to close on this note. In verse 6, the Bible says, I'm being ready to punish all disobedience when your own obedience is complete. Child of God, you have suffered enough. You've been through all sorts. Now you are in Christ. 
shouldn't we see results in your life? It's time for you not to sew the old clothes with the new cloth. One will tear. It's time for you to say, you know what? If a man is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. As you walk in obedience, you will enjoy what the Bible has written about you as a new creation. You see, I didn't preach at you just to condemn, to condemn us. I preach so that you can turn the prodigal son in Luke 15, verse 18. He said to himself, the Bible says, he came to himself. He came to himself. I want you to come to yourself. I want you to come to yourself. In verse 17, he said, he said, I will arise. Verse 18, he said, I will arise and go to my father. And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against you. Have nothing changed when he, when he just thought in his heart. So you may be here thinking, oh, I will do this. Nothing will change. It's okay if we just start like that. But in verse 20, he arose and came to his father and change started. Suddenly, when the father saw him, he ran to him. Where he was, the father didn't run to him. The father was just static until he made that move. Child of God, I want you to make that move today. That thing. Take that step. Nothing moves until you move. You may think maybe I'm teaching Old Testament, but I'm telling you, nothing moves until you move. Nothing changes when you so change. You will see change. The Bible, Bible says the father saw him. Let the father see you. He saw him and had compassion. Make that move now. Don't only be prayed to your heart and say, oh, one day I'm going to change. No, change now. Do something now and everything will change concerning you. Let me quickly say this as I close. When you hold on to something and say, I'm not going to change, it is said that you are proud. And before, before destruction is pride. Pray in the name of Jesus that we will enjoy grace. Amen. The grace of God can increase in our lives. We will enjoy grace. Amen. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow. Any sorrow in your marriage is out today. Amen. Even as you obey God. Amen. Any sorrow, any closed door experience is open today. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. bondage no more. Stagnation no more. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now lift up your hands and give thanks. Give thanks that you didn't discover these things in the grave. Give thanks that you are alive to, to put things in place. Give thanks. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. As you leave, God goes with you. Amen. Today, you will have on your, on your usual results. Amen. God will help you. So shall it be in Jesus' precious name.